Welcome back. 626. As you know, last Thursday we had a devastating wreck here in Hamilton County. 15 uh, folks injured, nine vehicles, six of those dead. Something like that obviously hits all of us as a community. And here to talk about how we deal with that is Susan Ewing. Susan is a licensed clinical social worker. Susan, good morning and welcome to the show. Thank you. Where do we start when you hear of a tragedy like this in a community where many of us knew some of the people that were in the wreck? This hits all of us especially hard. Why do you think it hit us so hard and how do we begin to deal with it? Okay. Well, I think it, it hit us so hard because it was the um, inconceivable that we don't expect when we get up one morning that we're going to be hearing about a friend who has um, been killed. We don't expect to hear about um, children, you know, dying in a car crash. Right. This is sort of um, vicarious trauma, if you right. will. It's affected all of us here. Uh, what did you think as a mental health professional when you first heard about this? The, the first thing that struck me were the, the first responders. Mm -hmm. the, um, the story of the, of the gentleman in the hotel who ran the fire extinguisher down to the wreck and right. how that would have impacted him or the, the, the man who pulled the woman out of the car covered in fuel, that what it would be like for someone to be in the immediacy of that kind of, of trauma. A lot of people are sort of angry, frankly, that the truck driver has not been charged with anything right. as of yet. Um, in fact, he's back in Kentucky yeah. now as well. Do we feel the need to put our hands around something in a case like this and find somebody or something to blame? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. One of the the first responses that we have is is looking for a reason or a cause, and finding someone to blame, finding someone that we can we can pinpoint and say if it weren't for this thing, this this wouldn't have happened. It's it's really um, a, a normal response to look for someone to blame. I want to talk about the driver for a second. We don't know if something went wrong with the truck or if it was driver error. Right. At the end of the day, six people are dead and over a dozen others are injured. But this driver of this 18-wheeler, he's also going to have some pretty serious psychological scars to carry around. Yes, yes. That there isn't anyone that's going to escape uh, not having some anxiety, some, some anger, some um, real difficult mm -hmm. um, emotional experiences because of this. It, it hits close to home for everybody. Is this situation made worse because of the children that were involved? I mean, in a situation like this, they're not your kids, they're not my kids, they're our, they're our kids. kids. Um, a lot harder to deal with because of the children that were involved? Yeah, I think any time that, that young people are involved, it hits us particularly hard. And, and not just the kids, but the, 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 the teacher, the, um, uh, the resident counselor. You know, these, these um, people who died were in their 30s. They're still uh, in the prime of their lives. And I guess there's a lot of survivor's guilt going right. on as a community. Right. Nobody wants to admit they're glad it wasn't them. That's correct. That's correct. Where do you go to? Where's this place we go to inside to make ourselves feel better about this? Not to justify it, but to find some sort of silver lining to the cloud. Well, I think that you're right, that we want to make meaning out of it. Mm -hmm. And if we can find a way to, to make meaning out of the tragedy, it's, it's, um, it begins to help us heal. So starting um, support groups or, or going to the service or lining the, the roadways in a, in a parade to offer support to the families, that, that if we can take something horrible and, and turn it into a way that we have hope or that we can um, maybe do something so that it might not happen again. One final question. If you could talk to the first responders who were involved in this, the fire, the, the firefighters, the police and the EMTs, who, by the way, all of you did one hell of a job yeah. on that. You're, you're to be commended. What would you tell them? What would your, what would your takeaway message to those first responders be? Okay. To be aware of the, the signs of grieving and the signs of um, post-traumatic stress that they will go through periods of um, sleeplessness, of anxiety, they'll, they'll um, experience depression, uh, all sorts of emotional, a wide range of emotions, and, and to talk to somebody. I know there are people that are available And that is perfectly normal for them to go through this. Absolutely, 
Absolutely. All right. Yes. Um, I wish we had more time, Susan. Thanks so much for sure. coming down and joining us. We appreciate um, your, your time and your expertise in this matter. If you'd like to get in touch with Susan, talk about this or anything else, there is the email address, Susan Ewing, LCSW at Hotmail.com. Again, Susan Ewing, LCSW at Hotmail.com. It's 631. We're back with more News 12 right after this.